We are live from the coastal city of Portland. This is Maine, and we are in the Cure Insurance Arena for Thursday Night Smackdown. Nine nights away from bad blood, and there is certainly some bad blood to be settled in tonight's main event. The Mad Dragon, Ilya Dragunov, is on the hunt for the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre, but standing in his way is the Celtic warrior Sheamus. A new relationship between Sheamus and McIntyre has developed. He runs into Dragunov here tonight and also here in Portland who will move on to meet Kyrie Sane in the number one contenders bout next week the goddess Alexa Bliss former champion Raquel Rodriguez they lock horns in the Eliminator series here tonight from the Cure Insurance Arena but we kick off Smackdown with tensions bubbling up between Imperium as well as the Trick Mellow Gang Ludwig Kaiser may have fallen short to a returning franchise player in John Cena last week. Moments later, we saw the reemergence of the ring general Guther. There has been development in that story that we will touch on following this matchup. But we got a grudge tag team contest to kick things off here on SmackDown. We want to take you back to a couple of weeks ago as Ludwig Kaiser continued to be in the foresight of the United States champion Carmelo Hayes by taking out his right-hand man in Trick Williams earlier in the day in the parking garage. Ludwig Kaiser went on to challenge Melo one-on-one -on -one in a non-title contest later that night. No trick to be found, and Melo was met with the numbers game of Imperium. Kaiser pinning the shoulders of the United States champion. You gotta imagine Ludwig Kaiser may still be in line for United States Championship bout against Carmelo Hayes, what would be a return matchup from No Mercy last month. Obviously, John Cena interrupting the momentum of Kaiser last week at the season premiere of SmackDown in Brooklyn. But tonight, Imperium goes up against their recent rivals in the Trick Mellow Gang, and certainly a score to be settled live tonight on Thursday Night SmackDown. We thank you for joining us from the Cure Insurance Arena here in this coastal city of Portland, Maine, nine nights away from our trip to Boston at Bad Blood. And there is some bad blood between these two duos that the United States champion Carmelo Hayes, alongside his running buddy and Trick Williams, are looking to settle once and for all here tonight. Trick Williams has got to be itching to get his hands on Kaiser after what you saw happened a few weeks ago in the parking garage. And their opponents at a combined weight of 415 pounds, the team of Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. You got to wonder if Trick Williams is 100% or not, but either way, he is going to come into the Cure Insurance Arena tonight Looking for a fight. The Trick Mellow Gang not wasting any time. Hitting the ring and throwing fisticuffs with Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser. You had to imagine the Trick Mellow Gang was going to be red hot. They were going to be emotional coming into this tag team bout. And I think that might have taken Imperium by surprise. Well, the bell has sounded and Trick Williams looking to get his pound of flesh against Ludwig Kaiser. A victory would be of the utmost importance for TMG tonight, turning Imperium away for good. Ludwig Kaiser has got to be itching for another opportunity to get at the United States Championship. And if Imperium can find a way to keep down the very emotional Trick Melo gang here tonight, Kaiser may do just that. All remains to be seen as we are underway here on your Thursday night edition of SmackDown. The rivalry between these two duos has developed ever since the end of August. Ludwig Kaiser's ambushed Carmelo Hayes on numerous occasions. Did so to Trick Williams as well. Kaiser falling short to Carmelo Hayes in defense of the United States Championship last month in Montreal at no mercy. But clearly we have seen that that has only been the beginning of Kaiser's chase for gold. 
Of course, as we talked about the re-emergence of the head of Imperium, the ring general Gunther last week showing face for the first time since losing the World Heavyweight Championship back in August at SummerSlam. Confronting John Cena and Gunther did take to X earlier this week with a very short yet simple statement, effective as all hell. And we are to address the growing issue, if you will, between Gunther and John Cena moments after this tag team bout. Developing story here on SmackDown as Giovanni Vinci is tagged in and looking to pick apart Trick Williams, trying to isolate him away from the United States champion Carmelo Hayes. Mello has held that gold since the Great American Bash edition of SmackDown back in July. Has turned away a couple of challenges, Ricochet, Chad Gable, but this ever-looming issue with Imperium continues to be a thorn in his side. Let's see if Trick Williams has got enough in the tank here tonight to get the TMG back into this matchup. Vinci going for a ride down to the canvas, forcefully by Trick Williams. And there's a tag to the United States champion. Carmelo Hayes got to be itchy tonight. It was Giovanni Vinci who took his eye off the ball two weeks ago here on SmackDown, allowing Ludwig Kaiser to take advantage and pin the champion's shoulder to the mat. Another cover this time. Ludwig Kaiser breaking things up. Referee John Cohn really getting caught in the crossfire. The action hot and heavy here on Thursday Night SmackDown, and one thing is for sure, anything can happen here on the blue brand. There's going to be an awesome night of action still to come. Ilya Dragunov, one-on-one -on -one with the Celtic warrior Sheamus. Sheamus has been showing a new side of himself as of late. It seems as if Drew McIntyre's words have finally seeped into the mind of Sheamus. The Celtic Warrior looking to prove he still has an edge, and he goes one-on-one -on -one with Ilya Dragunov in the main event tonight on SmackDown as Imperium double-teaming the United States Champion. And now we're back where we were twice before with Kaiser and Mello, mano y mano inside of that ring. Carmelo Hayes obviously not looking to fall short to Imperium's Kaiser once again, but unfortunately, Ludwig Kaiser may not give an option. United States champion as well as Trick Williams obviously coming in emotional tonight. You saw them make a beeline for the squared circle and go right after Imperium. We're not hesitating tonight. Sometimes that could be your biggest benefit or your own worst detriment. Sometimes seeing red is only going to come back to haunt you inside of that ring. Mello going for the springboard. There you see, overcommitted, and Ludwig Kaiser got right out of the way. Mello making a much needed tag to old Trick Willie. Willie kind of come in here and make a difference. Down goes Kaiser. With every fiber of his being, Trick Williams reimagining what happened in the parking garage two weeks ago when he was sent into that car windshield by Ludwig Kaiser. Not looking to see a similar result tonight with Kaiser instituting the beatdown. Trick Williams looking to turn the tables on Imperium's representative in the midst of this tag team bout. All about a little bit of retribution for the Trick Mello gang here tonight. Trying to keep each other fresh as Mello now back inside the squared circle. Around and around we go! Nice neck breaker on Kaiser. Kaiser seven nights removed from a very physical matchup against John Cena in the main event of Barclays Center last Thursday. Week before that, as we mentioned, was in the ring with Carmelo Hayes. Gotta wonder if there's any lingering effects from those battles for Ludwig Kaiser coming into this matchup. Either way, Carmelo Hayes is going to give Trick Williams, I should say, give Ludwig Kaiser a beating he won't forget. Meanwhile, Trick Williams tagged in and goes right after Giovanni Vinci. All's fair in love and war. Trick Mello gang never been afraid to get their hands dirty. Especially against two men who have given him hell over the last few weeks on SmackDown. Kaiser hanging Trick up in the top. That's the veteran experience of Kaiser coming back to haunt a very young and naive Trick Williams and may have just sent his head off his shoulders into the fifth row. Carmelo Hayes breaking things off. Nearly a victory for Imperium, but the United States champion still on the soles of his boots. Back in enemy territory goes Trick and now once again a tag made 
to the star-studded athlete that is Giovanni Vinci, a multiple tool player inside of that ring, a dangerous weapon for Imperium. Trick making the tag to the United States champion, standing between these two opposers at the moment. Vinci gets the best of them. Maybe not for long. Never turn your back on Carmelo Hayes. First 48 into the cover. Will that be all she wrote? Not just yet, Giovanni Vinci still alive. Carmelo Hayes striking while the iron was hot. Unfortunately for him, Vinci still with enough wherewithal to muscle up his shoulder. But Carmelo Hayes not looking to miss the mark. Springboard, wow, what agility by the Houser of the red, white, blue, and gold. Vinci getting sent for a loop, at least he was for a moment. Create a little bit of distance there. As Imperium looking to find a way back into this matchup, turning Carmelo Hayes inside out. Wiped out is the United States champion, and Vinci's not done. Eyes locked on Carmelo Hayes. Once again, cradling him up into the pinfall. And Trick Williams getting him some. Man, referee John Cohen's having one horrible night. Well, the Forest City of Portland in appreciation of this tag team bout as Imperium and Trick Mellow Gang leaving every fiber of their being inside of that squared circle. Mellow ducks underneath of it. Another reversal. Counter for counter that time. Kaiser looking to take the fullest advantage. Small package on the United States champion. Kaiser steals another victory over Mellow. Two for two over the United States champion in just a couple of weeks time. The Trick Mellow Gang was certainly motivated tonight to get retribution on Imperium. Unfortunately, they will have to live to fight another day because Kaiser and Vinci executed on their game plan. Ludwig Kaiser has now pinned the United States champion not once but twice in recent weeks. Imperium once again starting to stake their claim on SmackDown. Thanks to Kaiser, thanks to Vinci, and of course, thanks to the return of the ring general last week in Brooklyn, New York. Got to keep his eyes on the devious Ludwig Kaiser. Kaiser taken down on the shoulder block. Seen in prime position for an attitude adjustment. AA delivered. Victory for John Cena. John Cena is back on Thursday night SmackDown and making an immediate impact in the main event with this victory over Imperium's Kaiser. Wait a minute. Oh my goodness. Well, look who's come around and is showing his face for the first time since SummerSlam. The Ring General, Guther, is in Barclays. John Cena made the ring walk last week only to be confronted by Guther, who went on X and simply said, the franchise, the greatest of all time, laughable. I'll see you around, John. Clearly, the former World Heavyweight Champion not taking too kindly to John Cena's introduction last week, being known as the greatest of all time. Well, a developing story there. Here on SmackDown as Imperium is looking to once again stake their claim at the top of the blue brand. But going back to a couple of weeks, the Street Profits were knocked off with a debuting D'Angelo family. Tonight it is singles action as Montez Ford looks to get the Profits back on track. Ford, Tony D'Angelo right here, right now on SmackDown.
The Street Profits were knocked off by the surprise factor a few weeks ago. Tonight, they see the fight coming. It's Ford. It's Tony D. It's coming up next here in Portland. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Nomination Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. It's a better time than any to become a No Nation Gaming channel member. Hit the join button down below or the link up in the cards and gain access to this month's Halloween Havoc events coming up this Saturday on October the 12th, of course, as well as the 26th. But in just 48 hours, night one of Halloween Havoc, one half of the new WWE Tag Team Champions in Dragon Lee takes on El Idolo, Andrade. Andrade knocked off Rey Mysterio this past Wednesday on Velocity. Can he turn away Dragon Lee? Coming up courtesy of Monday Night Raw, one of Raw's hottest newcomers in Lyra Valkyria. She has been on a tear on the red brand, but can she get through the young and motivated Ivy Nile? This should be a fight from Raw's women's division. Originally signed for a triple threat match, but the ante has been upped. It is a ladder match for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. These three men have been intertwined for months on SmackDown. Tyler Bate defends the gold against JD McDonough, as well as Pete Dunne in a ladder match on Saturday night. And the man who returned last week, the franchise John Cena, teams up alongside the World Heavyweight Champion Cody Rhodes to take on a town down under. Cody gets Randy Orton at Bad Blood in nine nights, but the two men who have been hanging around Randy Orton in recent months, Theory and Waller, get Cody and Cena on Saturday. Halloween Havoc Night 1, exclusive for No Nation Gaming channel members. You're not going to want to miss it this Saturday from the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore. But we are back in the forest city of Portland, Maine. It is time for some competition here on SmackDown. The D'Angelo family, successful in their shocking debut a few weeks ago as they turned away Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins of the Street Profits. But tonight it is singles action. Tony D in his first singles competition here on SmackDown, one on one against Montez Ford. Street Profits have had some up and down momentum ever since joining the Blue Brand in the draft earlier this year. Looking to get back on track after they were turned away by the D'Angelo family just a few weeks ago. Tony D and Stax, former NXT Tag Team Champion, something Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins know all about. They've held championship gold across all three brands here in the WWE, but it has been quite some time since they have done so again. They've had their opportunities on both Raw and SmackDown throughout 2024, but Dawkins and Ford have just not been able to cross the finish line. If Tony D'Angelo has his way tonight, tonight is not going to be the evening that Ford and Dawkins start to turn things around. Springboard, Montez Ford, massive athleticism. Into the crossbody, taking down Tony D. D'Angelo still got some fight in him. Tony D'Angelo loves to throw some strikes, those closed fists, loves to break things down to a brawl. Powerhouse at times as well. Montez Ford is going to have to rely on his speed and agility in this contest to try to turn away Tony D'Angelo here on SmackDown. So far, so good. Stacking D'Angelo up in the corner. Now Ford going skyward over the top. Montez Ford all kinds of fired up in the middle of the Cure Insurance Arena. Sending Tony D'Angelo back inside the ring. And I don't think this is the fight that Tony D was prepared for. The D'Angelo family were able to use the surprise factor a few weeks ago. It was Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford who threw out a challenge to the SmackDown locker room looking to hopefully secure a victory and move one step closer to tag team title contention. 
Unfortunately for them, the debut of the D'Angelo family from NXT throwing them off their game. Tony D and Stax had the edge on that night. Can Montez Ford turn things around or will it be another successful outing for the new dawn of SmackDown? Close call that time as Tony D'Angelo taking Montez Ford for a couple of loops. Luckily, Ford was still able to get the shoulder up. Didn't get all that boot moments ago. It allows Ford a moment's hesitation to close the window and get back into this matchup. Counter for counter here. Both these men jockeying for position. Float over DDT, dead center of the ring. I'm sure just as the Street Profits won. Oh, wait a minute, hold that thought. Inside Cradle, this benefited Ludwig Kaiser. Moments ago on SmackDown does not have the same effect for Tony D'Angelo. As we we're about to say, I'm sure just as the Street Profits want to get themselves back in championship contention here on SmackDown, the D'Angelo family would love that same opportunity. Some newcomers to the blue brand looking to make their mark as Tony D on spaghetti legs. Ford go for a springboard. Nobody home off the delivery. Tony D gonna take the most advantage. The Don of SmackDown successful in his in-ring singles debut. The Street Profits gonna have to go back to the drawing board as the D'Angelo family has just got their number over the last few weeks. We rewind the clock to last Sunday afternoon in Hammerstein Ballroom in Manhattan, New York, where the 2024 Cruiserweight Classic has been going down. SmackDown's Akira Tozawa battled NXT's young OG, Javon Evans. Credit to Javon Evans, surviving some of Tozawa, a former Cruiserweight Champion's best offense throughout this contest. And even when you thought the young OG was down and out, the man found a way to survive. Evans proving he is going to be a force to be reckoned with throughout the tournament as he punched his ticket to the quarterfinal round. Moments later, we found out who Evans would be facing in just a couple of weeks as SmackDown's Wes Lee battled Axiom in an absolute war of attrition. It was exhausting watching this matchup. I can't imagine competing in the middle of the damn thing. But in the end, it was Wes Lee who threw caution in the wind more times than any and got his hand raised. And now we look forward to this Sunday afternoon, live at 12 noon Eastern time, back inside Midtown Manhattan, as Alpha Academy's Chad Gable battles TNA Wrestling's Jonathan Gresham. Also representing the TNA brand is legend Frankie Kazarian, who has made weight for the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament and goes one-on-one -on -one with the LWO's Joaquin Wild. The CWC continues live this Sunday afternoon at 12 noon Eastern. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way, exclusively, each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code. Follow on TikTok and don't miss a second of Velocity. We're back live on Thursday Night Smackdown. The following contest is scheduled for one star, making her way to the ring from Columbus, Ohio. Let's take you back to last week at the season premiere when this eliminator kicked off. The LWO Zelina Vega met with the surprise of the returning Sky Pirate and Kyrie Sane. And what really we didn't see coming was Kyrie Sane's actions throughout the contest, exposing that steel underneath the turnbuckle pad and sending the LWO's first lady right into it. Kyrie Sane doing anything she had to do to knock Zelina Vega's lights out in the middle of Brooklyn, New York, seven nights ago. 
Kyrie Sane now awaits the winner of this matchup for a contest next week on SmackDown. The winner moves straight into bad blood in just nine nights to challenge Roxanne Perez for the Women's World Championship. And here comes a woman who knows all about the prodigy and certainly that title. The former women's world champion Raquel Rodriguez has had a breakthrough year here on SmackDown and unfortunately lost that championship to the prodigy Roxanne Perez back in August at SummerSlam. A friend turned foe, Roxanne Perez doing anything she had to do to get to the top of the mountain here on SmackDown, even if it meant stabbing Raquel right in the back. Raquel Rodriguez, of course, going on new focus at the Queen of the Ring tournament. Turned away the first two challenges in the first two rounds, even turned away Alexa Bliss in the semifinals just a few weeks ago in Madison Square Garden. Raquel coming up short against Rawls, Tiffany Stratton in the Queen of the Ring finals. Luckily for her, finds herself in yet another championship contendership opportunity. Listen to Raquel running things back tonight in the matchup that we saw back at Madison Square Garden, the goddess Alexa Bliss looking for a different result. Alexa Bliss returned to SmackDown back in August as well and has seen a little bit of a mishmash of success. Advanced a few rounds in the Queen of the Ring tournament but has also seen some defeat. Hoping that she can keep down Raquel Rodriguez tonight clearly by any means necessary and move on to meet the Sky Pirate in Kyrie Sane next week here on SmackDown. Alexa Bliss would love to get herself a crack at the Women's World Championship, but Raquel Rodriguez, you gotta believe, more motivated than anybody in the women's locker room right now. Raquel has yet to step back into the ring with the prodigy Roxanne Perez for the Women's World Championship ever since that title left her grasp back in Ford Field in August. When to talk about bad blood, there are certainly some looming issues between Raquel and Roxanne that I'm sure Raquel is looking to take care of. Easier said than done. She's got to get through Alexa Bliss, which yes, she has done before, but it was not an easy task back in the semifinals of the Queen of the Ring tournament. You know, hold on a second. Wait a minute. I think I'm getting a little bit of news in my, my headset here. Well, evidently, ladies and gentlemen, the United States champion Carmelo Hayes as well as Trick Williams have issued a open challenge to Imperium's Gunther, Giovanni Vinci, and Ludwig Kaiser to a six-man tag team matchup Nine nights from tonight at Bad Blood. You're seeing it on your screen right there, but TMG, well, that's only two men. We're going to have to wait to see some development in this challenge, this breaking news here on SmackDown. I apologize for the lack of words, a little bit taken back, but Mello and Kaiser, I should say Mello and Trick, obviously not satisfied with the result earlier tonight. They want to get back at Imperium. Six-man tag team challenge has been issued for Bad Blood. Who is going to stand alongside Mello and Trick if Imperium chooses to accept? All remains to be seen here on Thursday Night SmackDown as we continue with Alexa Bliss and Raquel Rodriguez in the middle of the Cure Insurance Arena here in Portland. I'm sure the LWO's first lady in Zelina Vega is feeling some type of way after not only she came up short to Roxanne Perez back at the Queen of the Ring event in an attempt to win the women's world title, it was then turned away by Kyrie Sane by Hooker by Crook last week. A disappointing couple of losses for the LWO's Vega. But her good friend and Raquel Rodriguez is at least looking to bring some good mojo back to the locker room. Raquel off the reversal that time, using the power to her advantage, sending Alexa Bliss for an amusement park ride. Raquel Rodriguez has fought some of the best of them, has beaten some of the best of them in 2024, Alexa Bliss included. Alexa Bliss, a former champion across all brands here in the WWE, Raquel Rodriguez able to turn her away back at Queen of the Ring. Unfortunately, falling short to Rawls, center of the universe, Tiffany Stratton, as we mentioned in the finals of the Queen of the Ring tournament, Tiffany Stratton over on Raw. Awaits the WWE Women's Champion at Survivor Series next month. Wait a minute, Alexa Bliss inside cradle. Damn near stole the victory, but Raquel got enough power to get her shoulder out. I don't know if Alexa Bliss thought she was going to get the victory that time or just used it to lean on to get the momentum back on her side. 
Either way, Bliss back in control here on SmackDown. Raquel Rodriguez within a blink of an eye. Looking up at the lights of the Cure Insurance Arena. Oh, hold on a second. Alexa Bliss looking across the finish line. DDT. This thing could be done and over with. Close but no cigar. Raquel Rodriguez with a desire to be Women's World Champion all over again. Still in it. Portland, Maine coming unglued for some great women's division action here on SmackDown. This Eliminator Series birthing last week in the Brooklyn, or should, I should say in Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, and making its way through Portland tonight. All roads lead to next Thursday on SmackDown where the winner will punch their ticket. Just 48 hours later for Bad Blood and a matchup with Roxanne Perez for the gold. High stakes, high reward between Bliss and Raquel. Raquel Rodriguez seen an opportunity, just ragdolls Alexa Bliss right into her and back-to-back -back times has used her power to her advantage. Raquel Rodriguez starting to see daylight. Alexa comes up and she gets knocked right back down time and time again. You gotta admire the resilience of the goddess, but Raquel Rodriguez just may have her number here. Bliss set into the corner. Raquel looking to bring this thing to a close. There she goes, exploding out of the corner. But this one's not over yet. Both these women hoping to get that Women's World Championship opportunity at Bad Blood, not looking to see the opportunity slip through their grasp. Another reversal that time by Bliss. After being in the ring with each other at Queen of the Ring last month, they start to know each other's playbooks a little bit well, using it to their advantage. A lot of counters throughout this contest. Now Alexa just getting down and dirty, just trying to strangle Raquel Rodriguez, for lack of better words, in the corner. Whatever she's got to do to find success here tonight, even if it means once again putting her own body in harm's way. Raquel Rodriguez laid out on that thin padding at ringside. And that may be all she wrote. Alexa Bliss might have just certified her spot in the Eliminator final next week on SmackDown. Raquel Rodriguez down and out. There's a reversal that time, or at least we thought. Raquel is in prime position. Bliss could be going for a little Twisted Bliss, but there's nobody home. Raquel with a Tohana Bomb. The maneuver that defeated Alexa Bliss back in the semifinals at Queen of the Ring is the maneuver that secures Raquel victory here in Portland. Raquel Rodriguez one step closer to getting another dance with Roxanne Perez for the Women's World Championship that she lost two months ago at SummerSlam. The Eliminator Series continues to heat up week after week here on SmackDown. We're gonna be in for a treat next Thursday night when Kyrie Sane meets Raquel Rodriguez, number one contendership hangs in the balance. After no mercy is shown and a queen is crowned, the bad blood will boil over. Coming your way live on Saturday night, October 19th from the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Witness the unforgiving, high octane, and high stakes action as Raw, SmackDown, and No Nation Gaming channel memberships proudly present WWE Bad Blood.
Well, we are just nine nights away from our trip to the TD Garden in Boston, Mass. Saturday night, October the 19th, live, 5 p.m. Eastern time. It is bad blood. From Monday Night Raw, the WWE Women's Championship will be defended. Bianca Belair has been on the tail of Cora Jade, but Cora has just been in the right place at the right time. Bianca gets Cora one-on-one, -on -one, where she has defeated her in the past. But this time, the women's title is up for grabs. And another personal issue from Monday Night Raw will boil over. It is a casket match between Mr. Money in the Bank, Braun Breaker, and the Harbinger of Doom, Karrion Cross. Destruction is what these two men have on the mind for one another. Who's going to close the lid on their opposer? Raw's main event for the WWE Championship at the Second City Saint. CM Punk looks to get back the gold he was never pinned or submitted for back in No Mercy. For the first time in a WWE ring, he stands one-on-one -on -one with the phenomenal AJ Styles. And that six-man tag team challenge starting to make a little bit more sense. Imperium has accepted. Guther will return to action. And opposing Imperium, the United States champion Carmelo Hayes, Trick Williams, and the franchise, John Cena. Business is picking up in Boston in nine nights. And it is the SmackDown main event. And it could not be any more personal. The World Heavyweight Championship is on the line as the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes looks to finally bury the demons of his past as he meets the apex predator Randy Orton inside Satan's playground of hell in a cell. Something's got to give. These two men and their hatred for one another boils over in that demonic structure. But next Thursday night on SmackDown, in the XL Center in Hartford, Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton will participate in a pick your poison. Cody chooses Orton's opponent and vice versa. A chance to get an edge on one another before bad blood. That's next Thursday. And Tony D'Angelo, along with Stax, have had the number of the Street Profits. It was a huge singles victory for Tony D earlier tonight. Next week in Hartford, they run back the tag team contest, Profits and the D'Angelo family. And we saw moments ago the finals of the Eliminator Series are set. Raquel Rodriguez set to go one-on-one -on -one with the Sky Pirate, Kyrie Sane. The winner challenges Roxanne Perez just 48 hours later for the Women's World Championship at Bad Blood. All that action coming your way next Thursday night from the XL Center in Hartford. But we are far from done from the Forest City here in Portland, Maine. Ilya Dragunov wants nothing more than to get his hands on Drew McIntyre from bell to bell. But in order to do so, he's got to turn away the Celtic warrior Sheamus. Dragunov prepared for war as always here on SmackDown. Don't forget, we are live at 12 noon Eastern this Sunday for the Cruiserweight Classic as SmackDown's Chad Gable meets TNA Wrestling's Jonathan Gresham. Plus, TNA legend Frankie Kazarian is one-on-one -on -one with the LWO's Joaquin Wild. The first round of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament continues live this Sunday. Ilya Dragunov knows a thing or two about that tournament. He won the whole thing last year and over the last 12 months has solidified himself as one of the faces of Thursday Night SmackDown. Win, lose, or draw. One thing that is always promised when Ilya Dragunov enters the squared circle as he is ready to put his body on the line and institute a symphony of destruction against his opposer. Tonight, no different. And tonight, Ilya Dragunov looks to get even with the Celtic warrior Sheamus. March right through him. Stand over him tonight. Look dead in the eyes of the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre and tell that man that he is next. Sheamus out to prove that he still has an edge. That he still is able to give this man hell here on SmackDown. And his opponent from Dublin, Ireland, weighing in at 267 pounds, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus! 
It was upwards of a month ago on SmackDown that WWE.com cameras caught up with McIntyre and Sheamus. McIntyre looks to be really extended a hand to Sheamus trying to put together some partnership and Sheamus denied, realizing that McIntyre had become a changed man. And just a few weeks later, Sheamus testing himself against Cody Rhodes and well, had a similar outcome. And it seemed as if Sheamus finally realized that he needed to listen to his old friend and Drew McIntyre. Even though McIntyre and Sheamus had come to blows recently on SmackDown, Sheamus turning a blind eye to what McIntyre has done throughout the summer, to the change of heart, to the cold-hearted blood that McIntyre has pumping through his veins. Sheamus realizing that what McIntyre said may have been correct, that Sheamus may have lost his killer instinct. Sheamus, now along with McIntyre, trying to find it and trying to reestablish himself here on SmackDown. The bell has sounded. Here we are underway with what promises to be a battle between Ilya Dragunov and Sheamus. Dragunov's arch nemesis and Drew McIntyre standing at ringside. Dragunov needs to remain focused, however, on his opponent tonight. Sheamus scaling the ropes in the early going. Uncharacteristic, but remember what we talked about. The Celtic Warrior out to prove he still has the killer instinct that once made him a champion here in the WWE. Ilya Dragunov unfortunately riding in tonight with lesser momentum than he would have liked. Falling short to the Apex Predator Randy Orton last week on SmackDown. I'll bite. A lot of that having to do with the distraction from Drew McIntyre. Nonetheless, Ilya Dragunov hell-bent on getting back into the ring with the man who embarrassed him in London, England, beat the hell out of him time and time again here on SmackDown, and beat him so bad back at SummerSlam, Dragunov was out for a month of action here on SmackDown. The Mad Dragon wants to get even with the Scottish Warrior. The Tsar not looking to be a stepping stone for McIntyre's climb back to the top. If Dragunov's got to go through Sheamus to get his hands on McIntyre, he will do what he must. Ilya Dragunov has proven throughout this year to be a warrior like no other. McIntyre and Sheamus may call themselves such, but Ilya Dragunov proven that no matter how many times you knock him down, he will continue to get back up. Tonight is going to be a real test as McIntyre looms at ringside and Sheamus pushing his weight around inside of the ring. Sheamus wants to prove he still has that edge, still has something within him to be a champion on SmackDown, to be a feared individual walking the hallways of each and every arena. He's got to start raking up some victories inside of the ring. Ilya Dragunov looking to march right through Sheamus. Be that man dragon, spew his fire, lay waste to the Celtic warrior, and stare right in the eyes of Drew McIntyre by the end of tonight's trip to Portland, Maine. A symphony of destruction, we called it. Ilya Dragunov looking to play his greatest symphony yet. This is what Dragunov really needs to do, not allow Sheamus to dictate the pace. If Sheamus is the dictator throughout this matchup and really pushes his weight around, as we mentioned, it's going to be a long night for Ilya Dragunov. Well, hold on a second here. Sheamus sent to the outside. Here comes Ilya, full head of steam, delivering a pair of boots to the Celtic Warrior. A mad dragon dishing the fight right to the great white and sending him back inside the ring realizing Sheamus might have been sent for a loop off the top with a headbutt drag it off willing to put his own body through pain and suffering if it means doing the same to his opponent well, hold on now Sheamus might have caught a very overzealous man dragon not just yet Ilya Dragunov needs to remain focused, as we mentioned. Cannot allow Drew McIntyre's presence at ringside to be an X Factor. So far, I'd say so good. Ilya Dragunov, many have called him the personification of intensity, and I believe that is the perfect explanation for what Ilya Dragunov brings to the squared circle. Former Intercontinental Champion, Cruiserweight Classic winner last year went on to win the Cruiserweight title hold it for several months here on SmackDown and really throughout the summer elevated himself throughout the SmackDown locker room climbing that ladder if you will 
And even in defeat, Dragunov has continued to wow us, continue to win over the WWE Universe in a blades of glory. Might have fallen short in the King of the Ring tournament to Cody Rhodes. May have fallen short in his pursuit of the World Championship to Gunther back at Money in the Bank. And may have been destroyed by Drew McIntyre in the closing moments of their war of attrition back at SummerSlam. But Dragunov is still here. Dragunov continues to fight. And that is why so many from arena to arena continue to show their respect for the Tsar. We said it before, we'll say it again, Ilya Dragunov is just built different, and Sheamus realizing that before his very eyes tonight. You know, the interesting factor here is this is not the first time that Sheamus and Dragunov have met in one-on-one -on -one action. It's back in the first round of the King of the Ring tournament, live from Houston in the month of May, that Ilya Dragunov had defeated Sheamus on that night. One of the many losses that raked up for Sheamus over several months here on SmackDown that really led Drew McIntyre to tell his old friend that you have lost your killer instinct. Hence one of the reasons why Sheamus finally decided to listen to Drew McIntyre and try to regain his edge. And Dragunov bringing Sheamus to the top here. Oh, wait a minute, Dragunov sent! Off the misstep, and now the Celtic Warrior throwing his body like a boulder. Into the cover. Sheamus with the power and strength on his side tonight and just using his body to run over Dragunov that time. And you notice the exposed buckle that Sheamus and Dragunov were fighting around. Drew McIntyre obviously trying to give Sheamus a little bit of an aid in this contest. I'll tell you what, they can throw an exposed steel turnbuckle at Ilya Dragunov. Drew McIntyre can bring back his old sword. Sheamus can whip out a shillelagh. Ilya Dragunov will get knocked down, and he'll still find a way to get back up. That is why this man is just a different animal. But Sheamus off the white noise may be finding victory. Dragunov kicks out. Getting the shoulder up, but obvious damage done. And unfortunately, Dragunov not having the wherewithal to roll out to a different side of the ring. Not sure he wants to be in the looming distance of Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre has continued to have Ilya Dragunov be a thorn in his side. And I'm sure he would love Sheamus to get rid of his Dragunov problem once and for all tonight. McIntyre, I'd say, has made it very clear that he still has his intentions on the World Heavyweight Championship, and I'm sure will be keeping a close eye on next Saturday's Hell in a Cell contest. Saul McIntyre ambushed Cody Rhodes after Rhodes had defeated Sheamus several weeks ago. That was before Ilya Dragunov made his return, and Randy Orton also made his way out to the ring. It was a chaotic few moments here on SmackDown. As Dragunov looking to prove why he is a problem for everybody in the blue brand locker room. What a power bomb! Shame is still into this match. We have got ourselves a fight here in the coastal city of Portland. Sheamus sent to the ropes, Ilya Dragunov unable to capitalize. Sheamus just powering through, goes for a bro kick, nobody home. Dragunov sidestepped. Sheamus gets him again. Trying for a scoop and a slam, Dragunov denies, big boot by the Tsar! And now Dragunov, seeing some sun on the horizon, trying to get back into this contest with anything he's got to do, dropping a knee off the middle buckle. Ilya starting to rally here in Portland. Oh, hold on. He's got to keep his eye on Sheamus. Cannot allow Drew McIntyre to be an X-Factor at ringside. Sheamus will try to take advantage. Oh, no. Dragunov, at a moment's notice, is being sent for a ride. What a knee by the Celtic Warrior. And look at McIntyre putting his dirty hands on the man Dragon. And Sheamus continuing to institute a beatdown here at ringside. Oh, man. Just when you thought Dragunov was about to get back into this matchup and a rally here in Portland, the Celtic Warrior seeing an opportunity thanks to Drew McIntyre and not allowing Dragunov to get back into this contest. Sheamus taking advantage while he was at ringside. 
Using up all those seconds to beat down Ilya from pillar to post. With every fiber of his being, Ilya Dragunov trying to survive here on SmackDown. But the numbers with Drew McIntyre at ringside and the powerful offensive Sheamus may be too much to handle. As much as Dragunov wants to get through Sheamus and get his hands on McIntyre, that may be a fairy tale ending. Sheamus just beaten down the Czar here on SmackDown. Look at a slay of the dragon into the cover. This one's not over yet as Ilya still survives. I'll tell you what, Sheamus is truly showing a bit of an edge tonight. This is some of the best offense, like it or not, we have seen from the Celtic Warrior and certainly vicious at that. It has been quite some time since Sheamus has seen success. Over a year since he has challenged for a world championship here in the WWE. Dragunov down. Maybe surviving, but certainly isn't thriving. Sheamus dropping a knee off the top. Gonna crush the windpipe of the Czar. And now a power slam. How much more can Ilya Dragunov take? Sheamus is just having his way with Dragunov here tonight. Dragunov rolling to the outside. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Drew McIntyre with a cheap shot. Oh, come on, referee Chad Pat, you had to tell me you saw it. Thankfully, he did, and he sent the Drew McIntyre back to the locker room. Well, that is obviously a positive for Ilya Dragunov. What's not a positive is the fact that he was just sent into the apron and almost into the diamond-plated steps by Sheamus. McIntyre now, for at least a moment, going to be a non-factor in this matchup after getting caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Dragunov may have had a fire lit underneath of him. The Mad Dragon going to try to rally here. Sheamus not looking to allow it. Counter for counter. Drag it off with a boot. McIntyre being told to hit the showers by referee Chad Patton. Drag it off finds himself in a one-on-one -on -one bout with no outside distractions. Arm drag off the top. May have been looking for it earlier, but finally hit it. Portland, Maine coming alive, rallying behind the Mad Dragon. H-bomb by Dragunov. Sheamus may be out. Has Dragunov instituted enough offense in this matchup? Not just yet, the Celtic Warrior survives. Just when you thought Ilya had this matchup. The Celtic Warrior, Sheamus, the aggressor for the majority thus far, and although Ilya still has some fight left in him, does he have enough? It is now Sheamus, who we can describe as surviving, but certainly not thriving, as as we said before, we'll say it again, Dragunov made the trip to Portland for one thing and one thing only, to institute a symphony of destruction. Out of the ring goes Sheamus. Off the apron here, crash and burn. Dragon off, over committing, and crash and burns on the mats. And I'll set rid of those diamond plated steps. Ilya Dragon off may be his own worst detriment here tonight. Willing to put his own body in harm's way, do anything he's got to do to get through this war with Sheamus, but just got caught. Back inside the ring, Sheamus now muscling up. The man dragging and snake eyes him in the corner. Simple, effective, maybe doing it, but not just yet. And you see Sheamus starting to show signs of frustration here after Drew McIntyre was sent to the outside. Sheamus' game plan may be coming unglued. Dragging off, rolling to the outskirts, trying to get some R&R. &R. In the middle of this war here on SmackDown, Sheamus knocks him right back down to size. Dragging off, brought to his feet. Not by will, but by force. And slammed right up against the hardest part of the ring. 
Dragunov many a time throughout his career has thrived off pain and punishment. Will tonight be another night that he rises like a phoenix, sending Sheamus back inside the ring. Dragunov slow to capitalize. Bro kick! Out of nowhere, Dragunov getting caught. And it is Sheamus who plays a symphony of destruction here on SmackDown. With the aid of Drew McIntyre, Sheamus has rediscovered his edge, has found his killer instinct, and it looks like Dragunov's path back to facing the Scottish warrior comes to a screeching halt. Thank you for joining us here on SmackDown as the road to bad blood continues.